to this episode of On Target Conversations, a series about metastatic non-small cell lung cancer. My name is Rashida Persinger, and I am the medical oncology lead nurse practitioner at the Johns Hopkins Sydney Kimmel Cancer Center at Sibley Memorial Hospital. I will be your host for this series. Today's episode will focus on patient identification through biomarker testing. I am joined by Beth Whitmer, She is the Director of Care Management at Florida Cancer Specialists and Research Institute. Thank you so much, Rashida, for having me on today. Before we get started, I should note that this is a promotional program supported by AstraZeneca. This series is intended to provide educational information on the identification and treatment of patients with metastatic non-small cell lung cancer. We are speaking to you on behalf of AstraZeneca and have received compensation. But the dialogue is based on our personal clinical experiences with patient identification through biomarker testing. As previously mentioned, we will be discussing the importance of comprehensive biomarker testing to inform the best treatment options in light of the ever-advancing treatment landscape for metastatic lung cancer. Specifically, we will focus on how healthcare providers may be able to support their patients during the testing journey. Beth, what are your thoughts about biomarker testing and patient identification based on your experience? Well, in my experience, biomarker testing has made a difference from when I first started in oncology 14 years ago. Treatments for stage 4 lung cancer were very limited, and patient outcomes were poor. But now with biomarker testing, patients with driving mutations have targeted therapy treatment options along their treatment journey. This is my experience as well. Biomarker testing has improved patients' treatment options, and the treatment landscape is constantly evolving and has changed significantly since I started in oncology. Many patients recently diagnosed with stage 4 lung cancer think their treatment options are limited, but when they are told there may be additional treatment options, it's incredible to see the impact of this information on their faces. So Beth, as you know, lung cancer is the leading cause of cancer-related deaths in the United States, and the majority of patients will be diagnosed with a type of lung cancer called non-small cell lung cancer. I think it is also important to point out that, unfortunately, a majority of these patients are diagnosed with metastatic disease. You're right. And because of that, there is a need to identify the best treatment options for patients with metastatic non-small cell lung cancer. That's because the five-year survival rate of metastatic lung cancer is poor. Therefore, we need to ensure we are continuously educating our patients on treatment options that are the best for their disease with the goal of improving outcomes. I couldn't agree more. And one way we can potentially emphasize the importance of optimal treatment selection is by educating patients on biomarker testing and how those results could impact treatment decisions. In addition, Guidelines recommend biomarker testing to guide treatment options. You are right, Rashida. I think it's important to point out that this is not a singular disease, and approximately a third of the patients with adenocarcinoma, a type of non-small cell lung cancer, have an actionable mutation. Of those patients with adenocarcinoma, approximately 23% of patients will have an EGFR mutation, And approximately 7.9% of patients will have an ALK mutation. Yes. As you previously mentioned, about a third of patients with adenocarcinomas are found to have actionable driver mutations, which are distinct genetic abnormalities that promote tumor growth. And some of these driver mutations in metastatic adenocarcinomas have therapies that target them. And as healthcare providers, it is so important to educate our patients with metastatic non-small cell lung cancer that the NCCN Clinical Practice Guidelines in Oncology, also known as the NCCN Guidelines, recommends treatment options that target certain driver mutations. I know we say biomarker testing, but I think we need to point out that there is a distinction between molecular biomarkers and immune biomarkers. I agree, and it's equally important to assess both types of biomarkers in these patients. Molecular biomarkers are either present or absent and characterize the drivers of the tumor growth, whereas immune biomarkers can be measured based on variable expression levels and indicate immune system involvement. Examples of molecular biomarkers include EGFR, ELK, ROS1, and BRAF. 
I think it's also important for our patients to know that the molecular mutations found in lung cancer are generally not inherited. Beth, this is exactly right. And PDL1 would be an example of an immune biomarker, and its expression is measured as a percentage of cells having the biomarker, including tumor cells or immune cells. In addition, I should note that PDL1 expression ranges from absent through low to intermediate to high and can vary among tumor cells. And biomarker testing can be used to identify both molecular and immune biomarkers. And since guidelines recommend that treatment decisions should be made based on these results, it is important to discuss with patients the need to identify both types of biomarkers through tissue and or liquid biopsy testing. Especially since molecular and immune biomarkers can overlap, for instance, up to 70% of patients can have metastatic non-small cell lung cancer that is positive for both an EGFR mutation and pdl one expression. NCCN guidelines recommend that in patients whose disease is positive for an actionable mutation and pdl one expression, they should be treated with a targeted therapy, regardless of pdl one expression. What has your experience been with patients with metastatic non-small cell lung cancer who have both PDL1 expression and are positive for an actionable molecular biomarker? Well, in my experience, many patients have expressed anxiety about waiting to initiate treatment. And as an oncology nurse professional, I've had to caution patients against starting therapy without identifying their specific disease. I've had to emphasize the importance of tailoring their cancer treatment to their disease as outcomes may be improved. As professionals within the oncology space, we have to educate our patients on the turnaround time for biomarker testing and the importance of having a complete profile of the tumor prior to the treatment. In my experience, this is definitely an ongoing issue, and we have to constantly caution our patients against potentially initiating an inappropriate therapy for their specific disease. Interestingly, at my institution, private payers are starting to decline immuno-oncology therapies if a patient has not been tested for an actionable driver mutation. This is consistent with guideline recommendations that indicate the importance of treating a patient based on their complete biomarker results, including molecular test results. This is a huge advancement in the treatment of metastatic non-small cell lung cancer. And as we mentioned earlier, identifying actionable mutations through the biomarker testing is important because guidelines recommend that the first-line treatment decisions for patients should be made based on those results, if clinically feasible. For example, patients who are diagnosed with metastatic EGFR mutation positive non-small cell lung cancer should receive EGFR tyrosine kinase inhibitors. EGFR TKIs are the FDA-approved and NCCN guideline recommended for the first-line treatment of metastatic EGFR mutation positive non-small cell lung cancer. You know, Rashida, the treatment landscape for stage 4 lung cancer has really evolved from the days when chemotherapy was the only first-line therapy option for all patients. Yeah, that is a good point. And targeted therapies are now the standard of care for patients with metastatic non-small cell lung cancer and select driver mutations since they have demonstrated improved patient outcomes compared to chemotherapy. I know many patients ask about immunotherapy, but that is only a guideline-recommended first-line treatment option for eligible patients with metastatic non-small cell lung cancer whose molecular status is negative. At my institution, I've had patients ask about immunotherapy, but I do try to take the time to explain to them the importance of identifying molecular mutations and that targeted therapies are the NCCN guidelines recommended first-line treatment option for eligible patients who are positive for certain molecular mutations. Do you find that having this conversation with your patients help them understand that treating their individual disease is most beneficial to their treatment outcomes? Yes, in my experience, education is extremely important when it comes to discussing targetable mutations and potential treatment options with patients. Having that conversation and educating patients early on may help to set their expectations about identifying actionable mutations and how their specific disease type impacts treatment decisions. 
This is especially important in the patients with metastatic non-small cell lung cancer who have pdl one expression and an actionable mutation. I have to educate them on their biomarker testing results and how those results may impact their outcomes. I 100% agree. We need to keep educating our patients on the importance of biomarker testing to identify appropriate first-line treatment options. We've covered a lot of information today, and even though we know basing treatment decisions on biomarker test results is critical, biomarker testing at diagnosis may come with some challenges. What procedures does your clinic follow when your patients have challenges with biomarker testing? Great question. In my institution, We use both tissue and liquid biopsy testing at diagnosis to identify actionable driver mutations and inform treatment decisions. For example, a young never smoker female patient came to our practice for a second opinion after being treated by another locally based community practice with chemotherapy. While the initial practice has sent the tissue for testing, a complete panel had not been performed and a driver mutation was not found. Our practice sent out a liquid biopsy for testing and the patient was discovered to have a driver mutation. Tissue testing alone doesn't always identify driver mutations because of the heterogeneity of tumors. We need to do our due diligence to reflex test our patients. At this time, I would like to thank Beth for joining me today. Thank you so much for having me, Rashida. I would like to thank our audience for listening and hope you will tune in again soon. To listen to more episodes of On Target Conversations, a series about metastatic non-small cell lung cancer, please visit the web address as it appears on your screen.